Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to KMD Information Session Online. Hello. Hello, um, I'm Masai Nakage. I'm the Dean of the school, and I have wonderful guests here today. Um, Professor Okawa, uh, who's leading the project called Global Education, and with his students, um, Ada and Silmi. So before we dive into um, the uh, topic of global education, um, I want to summarize just a tiny bit about KMD. We assume that um, and hope that you have uh, watched my video to describe about KMD uh, unique features. But just in case you didn't have time to do this. Uh, so KMD is, a, an, is an institution of creativity and innovation. Especially this year, we are facing a global challenge and trying to redefine what we've been doing in the past called old normal to shape a new society called the new normal, or some people say next normal. So it's about future thinking. So KMD is about designing the near future of your desire, desirable future. In order to do so, this creativity thinking and innovation thinking are two important keywords. Innovation is oftentimes associated with diversity. Diversity reflects different lenses of people. It might mean different personality. It could mean different expertise. It could mean different uh, regional cultural um, lenses. Altogether, KMD enjoys a really dynamic and diverse community uh, with lots of international students on board, 60% above uh, international students representing from different parts of this planet. We also have age group diversity, ranging from early 20s all the way up to 60s sometime, depending on the cohort. And of course, um, the diversity of admitted students with different backgrounds. So because KMD enjoys this diversity, we think we are in a really good position to talk about innovation and do innovation within KMD. But of course, KMD alone cannot achieve such a um, ambitious goal of reshaping the next normal. So we partner with external organizations and that's why, why we say real project rather than research project. So um, let's look at some of the um, examples of KMD's unique functions. Um, I explained from my lens as a Dean, maybe Professor Keiko Okawa can talk about from her perspective, what she thinks KMD uniquenesses. So Keiko Sensei. Okay, thank you very much, Inakaki Sensei. Um, I totally agree with the points that you um, just introduced uh, as an uniqueness of KMD. Especially in um, our team, maybe we can introduce later on in detail. Um, a lot of cultures are not fighting each other, more like a collaborating uh, each other. And the, the, the very, it can be is very unique um, because the, everything, every single thing has to involve students and faculty to collaborate and the student to students collaborate. And um, because we, we know nothing can be done by alone. So I think uh, the, the curriculum itself is also encouraging students to collaborate and um, meeting also in faculty meeting, we fight each other but collaborate. <laughs> so um, maybe in KMD life, uh, we really uh, know, I mean, students will know how to collaborate and what the value, value of the collaboration and not the, um, not just talk, but have consensus and how to convince people. And actually collaborative collaboration in, involves a lot of um, discussion, to, uh, the understanding of culture and everything. So yeah, we, I'm, I'm talking about the same thing with Inakaka Sensei, but um, 
the curriculum itself and environment itself are, are very unique to encourage those. And we believe the communication solves this, this the world. So okay. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So let's listen from students' perspective. Uh, maybe I can invite Somi um, so first. Okay. Thank you, Inahaya Sensei. Yeah, I think the the diversity and the collaboration are uh, definitely one of the thing that make can be interesting. I get to work with uh, a lot of people from different background, different countries, and also the real project thing. Uh, because uh, one of the thing that made me interested in KMD was because I was a designer before, but usually when I design, I work for you know, industry company. Not that that's bad, but uh, I want to kind of make a small impact in the society, let's say. And uh, from uh, the website and from the information that I get before I enter KMD, KMD has um, that vision. Uh, the thing that we do, the thing that we design is not just in the school and that's it, but we have to do that in the real field uh, for the real people. So, yeah. Okay. You're currently um, pursuing PhD? Yes. I was here uh, for master's study and then I took a few years off as a researcher, mm -hmm. uh, also in KMD, and then now I'm back as PhD student. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's listen from Ada. Hi, Ada. So thank you for your question. And I think for my perspective, I'm a master's student. So I'm thinking that my two years of a KMD master's student life is that I use two years to experience different kinds of life because I participated in a global workshop and I participated as a both designer and main facilitator. I also presented, I also participated in a project uh, called I Am Project, which works for the Shibuya Senior Society. And I went there to do, to do interviews and also did workshop with seniors. And I also see uh, my seniors from Global Education doing her design called Kaiko, which also purchased for a uh, a prize this year and her in her during her uh, research i can experience some different difficulties about uh, women's in their uh, work placement it's like uh even though i have only experienced a one half a half and one year of kmd life but i think i can I can also see this kind of uh, life experience from different angles. And also it's like I have experienced life of many people. It was a really big surprise for me. Great, thank you. So um, we're in a very um, unprecedented uh, difficult or difficult time, people mostly say, but I see this as an opportunity as well. But regardless of that, um, so KMD was in operation doing in-person uh, meetings and classes. Now we shifted fully online um, or mostly online. What is your experience? Uh, how, how do you see online collaboration be very different from in-person uh, physical room collaboration? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, we have a very traditional uh, work research field called Global Workshop, which we usually works with 100 girls uh, in classroom to collaborate and uh, think actively about SDGs issues. But this year, uh, since the COVID thing, we make it online. So we don't have the class uh, separation. We do uh, one, we as uh, 120 girls at once and talking about such a big thing about the world that the about the pandemic. Uh, at first we thought it would be some kind of difficult, but uh, we figured out so many uh, tools to overcome this kind of difficulties. For example, there is one problem that uh, used to be the girls come from five different classes and we cannot, disti we cannot distinguish them by uh, only sitting at the Zoom virtual uh, place Zoom virtual place. So we use a very 
visual kind of method, we change the background of the students to visualize all the difference of the stu students. And also we were trying all these kind of online tools, uh, for example, Miro and something like that. We are really actively trying out these tools and also figuring out how to make it better to do a, a, a online cooperation, something like that. So at first, uh, we thought it would be difficult, but the result comes that all the high school girls was very satisfied with our work. Great, that's a great news. So um, KMD's success in shifting to online um, is actually behind the scene is Professor Okawa. Uh, without her, nothing was achieved. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> from Okawa Sensei's point of view, how do you see this difference between online community building versus offline or in-person? including classes, but um, out of classroom as well. Yeah, mostly, um, uh, actually, I had a period that I cannot go to the school because of my leg oh, you're, you're, breaking you're, you're, right. a year ago, before COVID-19. So I prepared everything to make the online communication will cover every activities and students are already used to it. And uh, in my office, I set up the um, computer and, and the communication methods and then students come into my room and I'm sitting in my house and that kind of things have been doing for a long time. So we, 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 are, we were ready both <laughs> COVID-19 from the first. Um, but um, we, so uh, the, that's important because we know the limitation, we know the characteristics of the online communication, and uh, we, were, we have some different way of thinking how to communicate. It's not the replacement of the physical contact, but more, uh, as Ada said, a lot of different way that can do better. And of course, we cannot do some, a lot of things, of course, but we can do more things that's, that we already knew because of my situation <laughs> helped. So um, only thing I miss right now is hugging. <laughs> so every time we have some celebration and some have happy things and we all like um, cry, whatever, we hug each other, but I really miss it. Other than that, we, we think differently. That's, that's very interesting. So speaking of hug, um, my former student from Play Project uh, did um, a group team project uh, called Hug. Uh, mm. And uh, they were a bunch of international students feeling lonely in Japan. Um, so they wanted to hug uh, their families and friends back home. Um, mm. So this uh, hug project is to design physical hug device. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's like a pillow. And when you hug uh, your pillow, um, the other end, the other pillow will uh, try to hug the person as well. Um, so I think even before COVID, um, people uh, distant apart and we, we try to solve this um, kind of distance problem already. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, so let's dive into global education um, because um, the new normal is about future. So to design the future, um, the players in the future society needs to be well informed um, and prepared to live in the desirable future, which might be very different from what we're experiencing right now. And education plays a super important role because the kids will be growing up and become the active members in the future society. Um, unfortunately, in many countries, education seems to be the most, one of the most conservative industries or sectors that are reluctant to try out and experiment. And I'm hoping this global education is um, showing possible routes of how education can be innovated for the 21st century education. 
So I'll ask Oka Sensei and the team to um, explain what Global Education Project is about. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so I think um, let us briefly introduce our team member. Maybe Ada or Sumi, you can introduce our team. Maybe using slides or whatever, the visual materials. Can we share slides? Sure, go ahead, please. Maybe it's better for Thank students you. to introduce you from your view. <laughs> it might be totally different from my view. <laughs> so. so hi, everyone. This is Global Education. We have uh, many active members and they are from different parts of the world. And uh, this is uh, on the right on the right up corner. There is Keiko Sensei and Marco Sensei, which are which is the core and the heart of our global education project. Mm -hmm. And I think our core I core ideas is only can be described from three aspects: global and education and technology. So, so Misa, would you like to introduce? So, us? yeah. Um, as the name global education, we mainly, not mainly, but our core uh, focus is on nurturing global in the society through education. And to do that, we are using technology. So we have uh, many sub projects that relates to these three ideas. But when we talk about education, sometimes we think about like classroom, boring education, and that's not what we are trying to do. Uh, what we are trying to do is we try to, like we discussed before, how should education be in the 21st century? So yeah, uh, if, yes, as I mentioned, we have some sub projects and uh, if we put them into categories, we have uh, those in the school and class setting, of course, one of them, but we also, do something related to long life learning. So it's not always in the classroom. It can be something that you learn when you are adult or outside of the class. And also we have a lot of um, projects that includes game um, theory or game design uh, to solve uh, certain issues. So yeah. This is basically the projects that are active at the moment. We have some that already that were, that were in the past. But Ada talked about global workshop uh, before, and uh, we also have um, my uh, my project is uh, in three sixty the yellow in the middle, <laughs> and then we also have a uh, future learn probably uh, that. Uh, one of our member work on creating an online, I don't know, like a MOOC system class for KM, for new KMD students, uh, which is also interesting. And uh, yeah, maybe Ada can talk about Global Workshop. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will just go through all these real projects very briefly because I think all these uh, sub projects are a really important research field, but it doesn't really, we don't want to limit you by all these sub projects. It's just a hint of what we are doing. Like global workshop, we are doing with uh, high school girls and we are not injecting knowledge to the students. We are thinking actively with the students and we divide we design uh, teaching tools and we design activities and we design all these materials for the students to think actively. So here are some pictures. And then we have the global kindergarten which focus on young, younger students of a uh, very early their age. And also we have Coma Keys. It's a, a cross-culture program through media and creativity. It's like uh, we can, uh, it's like uh, people from Taiwan, Chinese, uh, people from Taiwan, Chinese, Japanese uh, students work together and we share information and their works. And there are a lot of hands-on sessions and we design tools and the programs for uh, students to create, actually create something out. And there is a Milai project. It's also a workshop kind of project, but focus more on the high school age. And we let them to 
making, inventing, and raising awareness for innovations. And we even let the high school students to uh, touch the 3D printer and the laser cutting machine and build something about the gender equality and something big issues that as far as they can imagine. It's something like this. And then we have the lifelong learning. So me some, please. So yeah, uh, some of the uh, long life learning project that we have, can you put next? So um, as you know, in the society, we have a lot of fake news, even, and also with COVID-19, we have a lot of controversial news that might not be true, but Unfortunately, a lot of people believe about that. So one of our uh, sub project also uh, tried to solve that problem by uh, we are working with smart news uh, to educate people about um, uh, literacy in the digital media. And then the other project is the one that I am doing, uh, which focus on career education for children because career education for children is usually the age where we don't really think much because it's not the time for them to get a job yet. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. And then another one uh, is a future language I mentioned, like one of our member uh, work on the, can you click next? I forgot the title. Yeah, Metallurgies for Surface Design. So usually we, we used to have class in, uh, classroom setting, but this year we kind of combined MOOCs setting and um, not real life setting, we don't have that this year, but we kind of tried to incorporate this. So yeah, many interesting projects. And another one also, Sri Lanka project we work, so we are not only work in Japan, we also work with other communities in other countries, in Indonesia, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Thailand, um, we used to also work with uh, kindergarten students in the U.S. and in German, I believe. And then another uh, another issue in the society that we work on is gender issues. It's probably um, something that a lot of people talk about this day. So talking about gender stereotypes, and we're of course solving this will be difficult, but at least we can help people to talk about it so that we can come up with the solution next. And also we did a lot of uh, project related to games as well, uh, which is under the blue light. Uh, in blue light, we talk about, uh, some of our members created games about depression uh, awareness and also uh, family relationship uh, between parents, uh, between grandparents and uh, their grandchildren and also parents and daughter, parents and children. So yeah, the focus is not the game, the focus is the issue, but we are using games to solve that. So yeah, I think, yeah, that summarize uh, some of the projects that we are working on. And I think one key words that I always think, oh, that's very global education is collaboration. So even though one member is working on this certain sub project, um, everybody do, I mean, everybody helps each other. So I'm not, even though I'm working on uh, Intro 60, I'm not only do Intro 60, I also help with Global Workshop, with Coma Kids, with um, a lot of other projects, <laughs> basically. Thank you. So um, as you can see, our methodology is not to teach. Um, let them feel. That's the, uh, the core, core, I mean, um, philosophy of our activities. Always mm -hmm. let them feel. What is your role then? Me? <laughs> <laughs> encourage students. <laughs> uh, I always, yeah, I was always think, think that the student has the most um, knowledge and most skillful resource. I mean, people, person or designer. And because the people, students in charge thinks, 
365 days, 24 hours. So that person is the most knowledgeable person in that field. So my role is to support and encourage. And um, probably sometimes I, I talk to outside uh, collaborator, um, but yeah, that is my main role in both people. And also because we think about it 24 seven, sometimes we are too into it that we cannot see the surrounding. Mm -hmm. And Keiko Sensei and Marco Sensei's Ingola Education role is to help us to see from another perspective, I guess. Yes, I strongly agree. It's like every time I turn to Keiko Sensei is when I have some problems with my research and I will ask Keiko Sensei and have a meeting with Keiko Sensei. And Keiko Sensei is a very experienced person. So she can recommend so many things from different uh, ages and uh, expectives from her experiences and from her ex her alumni something like that so the, she can introduce so many references and hints and she can even find out my research problems and give me so many valuable ideas thank you thank you, thank you Ada yeah so mentoring and encouraging and supporting <laughs> <laughs> So the, the first slide of the, uh, the member of um, the project uh, had many um, country, fl country flags. Um, what is the language of communication? I know um, some April batch master students are fluent in Japanese, but not uh, confident in English. And some September or fall batch students uh, excel of course in English, but um, may not be able to speak a single word of Japanese. How do you bridge this sort of a different cohort? Well, basically we use whatever understandable in the member, but uh, mainly we use English, but um, it is sometimes very difficult to talk about um, different things in, in a foreign language. Everybody do. Everybody has a difficulties because mo most of us, um, it's, it's the first language is not English anyway. So we switch back and forth sometimes, but basically we agree on the common language as in English. And sometimes people start to suddenly start in Portuguese, suddenly start to uh, speak uh, Japanese, but uh, somehow uh, the friends can support. That's why what I see, but what, yes. what do you think? Um, English is the main one, but we also sometimes communicate in Japanese and Indonesian language, at least for greetings. Uh, in some of our meetings, we have kind of, not purposely, but kind of learning others language uh, session. Uh, I remember I learned Chinese, like slang language, I remember a long time ago. <laughs> and also Thai languages, like the five, 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 five. In Thai is laughing. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we learn other languages as um, much as we can, but the main communication is in English. Yes, I think one another thing is that both Keiko Sensei and Marco Sensei are very free, fluent in both English and the Japanese. So no matter your uh, main language is Japanese or English, you can both communicate and support, and she can be the bridge to communicate. Yeah, I think the um, the, the biggest challenge of KMD deciding to use both English and Japanese, the dual language system from 2008 onwards, is to how to bridge this gap of the language. And we wanted to make sure that we, we don't want to separate the English track students taking only English taught courses and never meet um, April batch students and vice versa. So um, this uh, project is a great mechanism um, because they come to project because of the, um, the topic of interest. And here we have a challenge of how to bridge the two cohorts from the September community and April community of Japanese language and English. 
And of course, now we starting to see um, there are many other languages that um, students communicate and able to communicate. Uh, you, men uh, you mentioned Portuguese, uh, Chinese is definitely uh, a very strong language. I sometimes uh, hear German, uh, <laughs> Indonesian. Uh, so this kind of a very multi-language uh, culture makes it very, very really vibrant. Um, so aside from the language uh, learning experience, do you also um, see yourself expanded in terms of cultural understanding of the, by meeting different students from different backgrounds? Yeah, definitely. Well, when I, I, I was born in Indonesia, I live in Indonesia and I never leave my city as well. So once I go to Japan, there are a lot of uh, problems that I use to see just what, from one point of view. But then once I come to Japan, meet Japanese people and also other people from another countries, I realize that actually uh, a lot of people have problems. Uh, and my problems, I mean, the problems in my country, not my problems, <laughs> uh, is uh, it's difficult, but it's, um, we can solve it. And um, it doesn't mean that my country is very bad because even developed countries have their own problem, like different one. It's just different problem, not that they don't have problems. So that's, I think, one of the things that I realized immediately when I came to Japan. Interesting. How about you, Ada? Uh, I think I didn't uh, face any kind of problem because in the society of KMD and the global education, we, we are so respected of this variety of culture. It's like whenever I share that, that we are experiencing a good fest a big festival of China and everything everyone who doesn't know also congratulations to me and I don't feel like I'm totally isolated or I feel alone I feel in a foreign country culture or something like that but I think uh, KMD is a place that respected this kind of variety so I don't think there is there will be a strong culture gap even if you are in Japan a very strange a very uh, different country, yeah. Yeah, I want to add to that if I may. Uh, so as you can probably see, I, I'm wearing hijab, I'm a Muslim. So once a year I will do fasting in, uh, for one month. And I remember, I actually, uh, Keiko Sensei already knew about that beforehand. <laughs> so uh, I was surprised to know that uh, in Japan, I think Muslim is not very, uh, not that many people are Muslim. So very interesting to know that she knew about it. And also other members try to kind of facilitate my fasting uh, by they try not to eat in front of me, even though for me, it's fine. <laughs> so and then when it's time for me to break my fast, they will uh, give me time to do that. So that's very heartwarming. <laughs> Keiko Sensei, um, many universities, especially Japanese research universities, try to set up your faculty lab. And um, in many cases, faculty labs have its own sort of a rule set and seen another lab as possible enemy or competitor <laughs> rather than possible collaborator. Um, and I really thought this would um, limit the possibility of innovation at KMD. So we scrapped that idea of faculty lab system and went into this project uh, system. So um, each student can talk to any faculty. It's a one big family, but also my hope was to have more collaboration between faculties. So from your experience and your view, um, how, how, how do you see this faculty to faculty collaboration, Oka-sensei? Well, um... It's always difficult to collaborate on research um, with busy people. So sometimes it is, it is not um, realistic to have um, joint research together with the different faculty members. However, we do have a, a good, you know, underst a mutual understanding of what they're doing and what the other faculty members are good at and what, what they have. So um, it's interestingly, they, we, 
we recommend students to talk to uh, that faculty member, uh, that uh, teacher, uh, professors on that topic. And that, I think that is kind of um, encourage students to communicate with many, many faculty members to do the collaboration among students. I think Ada, you are also um, doing a lot from, with other um, projects and we can contribute to other projects and we do know. So at least uh, we are very successful to encourage students to work together with other projects and we do not have any borders. But for us, uh, yeah, we, we, we need to do more better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe talking about a little bit about student life. Um, how busy are you in general? Do you have time to enjoy yourself? Um, or are you tied up with global education projects? Um, 24 hours, seven, <laughs> seven days a week? Or uh, what, what is the student life? I know um, it might be different from student to student. So um, Maybe I can ask Ada first. Uh, I think my life is busy, but not tearing because, <laughs> <laughs> because actually we global education have meeting very frequently. And every time Keiko Sensei checks our uh, research process and how is it going? Are you facing any problem? And what are you doing recently? And also in KMD, we have regular classes to choose. For example, in this semester, I'm choosing Kishi Sensei's business turnaround class. And it's also a very interesting and very a class with so many new knowledge for me. And business is totally a new uh, area for me. So I just learned a lot. So my KMD life is very busy and also expect for some regular research and regular classes. I also participating in some uh, Keiko Census research field, for example, global workshop and some kind of other events. So it is a very interesting uh, student life. And as I said at the first, it's like I'm not just uh, experiencing a life as a student or a researcher, but I'm experiencing a multiple layer of life. So I, I just think KMD life worth it. And besides all these kind of things, I even have my time to do a part-time job. So it is a very good experience for me. Great. All right. So um, Sumi? Yeah, I think we are busy studying and we are also busy playing. <laughs> hey. uh, and uh, of course, in the first year of master, of master, I remember we have a lot of classes, uh, the mandatory classes. But other than that, I even, uh, I was active in the Indonesian Student Association for two years in my master's study. So I can still do a lot of things. And also compared to other Japanese lab system where you have to be in the lab um, every day from morning to the afternoon, we don't have that system. So we can, we just go to class. And then other than that, we can go anywhere, like do our research, meet new people, learning from them, like different type of, uh, different kind of learning experience out of school. So yeah, busy studying and busy playing. <laughs> okay. So tell me, um, when you did self-introduction, you said you did master's with us and then you worked um, and then came back. Um, what is the reason for coming back and why to KMD? Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, That's a question that I got from um, from somebody. So okay, yeah, I think one of the main reasons that I feel comfortable with uh, KMD and Keiko Sensei, especially, and I have a very, I mean, I want to do something with education. So the topic itself already match, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, and then I did my project. Uh, I created a sub project under global education, the Indra 61, and I got a lot of help there. And I want to expand that into, uh, I guess, more um, in the research to be, to have more impact, more, more um, something that we can see, not just on paper. So I want to continue on that as well. And I think uh, KMD with the collaborations and then Keiko Sensei with uh, her network in, Southeast Asian uh, universities uh, would help me uh, very much on that. 
Okay, thanks very much. All right. So uh, maybe it's time for us to look at some questions that we got from the participants. Um, so I read it and um, uh, you're welcome to jump in to answer as well. So the question I have here is, is the 2021 fall semester going to be online? Um, we are not sure yet. Um, however, through this uh, lockdown process, we shifted fully online and closed our physical campus for a while. Uh, we are now um, doing a hybrid approach of classes of fully online almost, and giving students access to physical facilities for equipment use and for prototyping purposes and experimentations. Um, so it's a limited uh, uh, limited access um, reservation um, based approach of uh, reopening the campus. Uh, we feel um, in many of the classes that we teach um, on Zoom session like this, uh, I think it's really good to see students participate and paying attention. In the physical classroom, some students are very participatory and some students are busy looking at the laptops, um, hoping that they're taking notes, but we don't know. It might be doing WeChat or we Facebook. <laughs> we never know. Um, so the, the turnaround of the outcome of student uh, project at the end of the class seems to be higher in quality than uh, in previous years. So I, we feel um, we try to maintain and, and use this online platform uh, beyond the COVID-19 situation, which means we probably continue with some, some sort of online learning. Um, we are also aware of some shortcomings, uh, missing pieces, uh, doing fully online. Um, one piece that identify is what I call white space. So it's more like a not in the classroom in the session, but in between classes, you have a break and then in the physical um, school setting, you bump into your students and then starting to do informal chatting and that kind of um, non-purposed um, socialization or networking seems to be very important to bond people together and to also inspire each other and motivate each other. So I, because um, sessions, online sessions are very um, well designed for in-classroom experience, but between classes, you log off and then you do your own thing in your own space, in your private space and unable to meet friends uh, unexpectedly. So um, that piece, what I call white space is needed. Um, we are not sure how to bring this back. Uh, we hope um, the September fall semester, September um, 2021 semester is going to be more of um, in-person experience, physical activities and with online classes. Uh, we are not sure what is the blend and what is the mix. So I hope um, I answered the question. Oka said, do you have any further comments on this? Yeah, uh, I think we are uh, in the process of redesign of the value of physical uh, touch. So uh, it's going to be um, best mix. Uh, we sometimes people call uh, high flex, but uh, flex hyper flexibility to the students mm -hmm. uh, is something that we, we will pursue. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As your student experience, you started with in-person classes, and now you're fully online. Yeah. Um, what are the things that you think you you uh, you feel missing? Ada, you're muted. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think uh, the part, the most part we are missing. Yes, it is physical like collaboration, but we at the same time we get more flexibility of how to arrange our time. And for me, it's like when I feel I'm lack of con con relationship or connection with my KMD peers, I just uh, go to the P I just uh, uh, reserve the PR shift and go there even though in one big room there's only uh, six people sitting very separately and remotely from each other we can e even see each other's face and shout at each other to talk about our research projects it is 
very fun from another perspective. And also, uh, there was a period of time that Tokyo was not very serious. And uh, I also have a very, very brief dinner with Xiaomi san, and we talked about our recent lives and something like that. I think uh, another it's the same point with my last question. I think KMD is a very caring uh, community. So like uh, if you can keep the social manners, the social distance in a very well uh, extent, we can always meet and share ideas and be close to each other. Great, thank you. Thanks. All right, so let's move on to the next question we have here is, is it possible to transfer to the Japanese batch later in the year? if I choose to enroll in the English batch first. How are the master's degree courses arranged in KMD? Um, I think you might be misunderstanding. So um, you have a choice of um, April intake or September or spring intake or fall intake the, for the master's students. For PhD students, it doesn't really matter as long as you can communicate either in English or Japanese. Um, for the master's degree program, we have some required fundamental courses. Um, and for the spring batch, uh, once you begin um, the study in April, uh, you immediately go into this fundamental um, required course taught in Japanese. And there'll be lots of discussions and uh, collaborative work between students and you're expected to speak um, and understand Japanese. Um, the similar situation um, holds true for the fall batch. Um, everything will be taught in English, the same material will be repeated by the faculty. So um, the required courses are really the, um, the language barrier. And so for the April, we, you need to be able to speak um, Japanese fluently and English fluently in the fall batch. But there are other courses that you can elect um, and some courses are taught in English, some are in Japanese, and many of them are flipping between um, academic year. So if course A is taught in English this year, next year will be taught in Japanese and it toggles between the two languages. Uh, you can be brave enough if you, do, if you don't feel confident in Japanese, but jump into um, Japanese taught courses and trying to get some help. Uh, some, many faculties, um, uh, really supportive of trying to bridge this, this gap. So I think you can challenge that. Um, as I said, the projects are really mingled already. So there's no di differentiation between fall and spring batch. So um, the only thing that is required for you to do is in April, you need to do the fundamental course in Japanese for the fall batch in English. Other than that, it's mixed and you make the choice you can elect between different languages. So um, do, do you agree, um, Ada and Silmi? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. So um, third question, in which kind of industry career do global education project students work after graduation from KMD? Um, I'm not in a position to answer this. Oka Sensei and students can. OK. Um... As far as I know, a variety. As you could, I, as you said, uh, as we introduced, uh, many many sub projects, but um, th they are using different skills, different angles, but all are related to the education. So the the career is also the same. Um, somewhat related to the educational um, flavor, like uh, some people went to the uh, design firm, like uh, IDEO but still uh, working in the in, uh, educational arena. And also um, we have a lot of uh, international collaboration so that some, some of these students went to um, yeah, UNESCO or JICA to go further uh, that um, area. And some students are uh, the designer of the game or designer of the, uh, the cyber uh, create, create, creating some products, but still, somehow uh, related to education, I, be, I, I think m most, mostly. Steve, yeah. do you have? Um, yeah, I remember some of my friends also work in the, so not in the education, but there are like the management of, for example, an online learning product or, uh, yeah, so it's not only education, but not only classroom. We also, as the management, as the design researcher, as a, 
a policy maker probably. So yeah, education is the interest. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I always, I always tell students that um, because it's a postgraduate program, um, you have uh, already one set of expertise uh, from undergrad education training. And at KMD, depending on which project you jump in and join, uh, you have the you might get the second expertise or strengthen the first one. Um, and at KMD, there are electives and required courses that force you for students to go beyond the comfort zone of if you are trained as a um, business school uh, or economics, then we force you to code um, software. You, we force you to design. Um, and so there are many different um, lenses that students are required to experience at the minimum. And these combined uh, will probably give opportunities of where students want to um, work in the real workforce. Um, it doesn't have to be always education as Oka Sensei said, uh, UNESCO may be still related to learning, but um, uh, international organization would be one pass. Um, you can do a, we have a several startups um, from KMD. So um, I don't think we have a, a start, startup in the edutech yet, but uh, maybe in the future. Ada, you wanted to say something. Yes, because uh, from my experience, uh, some seniors from Blue Light, especially Blue Light, they are going to game companies because they have accomplished their first indie game during their master degree so that they are super qualified to enter a game company, for example, as a game planner or as a game designer. And also there, so for another so for other people, for example, the designers for Global Workshop, many of them are going to design firms. And I know uh, one of my senior called Sheena from Indonesia, she also have her own design brand, which is very lovely brand. So I think uh, probably not all related to global education, but we have a more uh, variety, various range of where we can go. Excellent. Um, and um, the next question we already touched upon is, uh, what are some of the interesting reasons why students go back to academia, especially choosing KMD after being in the work for some, for some time? Um, so I asked you, so, so me to answer this. I think the, the unique part of KMD PhD track is that we are not um, always looking into a uh, to train as a researcher or to become an educator. Uh, we want students to become a super innovator <laughs> at the end of the PhD track. So um, the opportunity, um, like the master track, uh, you, you don't need to always look for the research position or educator position, but you can also opt to look into some companies who are looking for innovation and be able to uh, support that um, kind of activity. Oka Sensei, do you have anything to add on this? Um, not really. Um, open, open world. So a bright future is waiting. <laughs> yep. All right. So I think we are um, hitting the, the time um, for our information session towards the end of the session. Um, final words from um, students and Oka Sensei to our participants here today. So starting with Silmi. Uh, from me, you will have fun in KMD, as I did. So if you have interest in doing something real for the, in the field with the uh, real people and real problem, KMD is the place. Great. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, KMD is a community that cares about world and big issues. And if you have a really huge dream about innovating something that and really achieve it, please come to KMD and realize your uh, realize your dream in from multiple perspectives. Excellent, thank you. And uh, Oka Sensei. Well, um, thank you for coming to the info session. And I, I believe KMD is a place that you can find your different um, opportunity and find surprising value of yourself. And maybe it, it helped you to design the next um, path or next step of your life. 
welcome and come yeah. to <laughs> can be all right so um this uh Hope, hopefully um, convince you that uh, KMD might be a really um, good a place to be uh, for your career path. Um, so please consider us and hopefully we can meet in person in the future. All right. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. See you.